so yesterday we had done up to verse 66 from chapter 2 of the Bhagavad Gita so I will just give you a small recap of that Sri Krishna is talking about two kinds of people one who has been able to control his mind so this particular person who has controlled the mind can reach the state of enlightenment also and on the other hand he is talking about average human beings who have not been able to control their minds at all so a person who has controlled the mind has an intellect which is called the divine intellect. We discussed about the two kinds of intellect. One is the normal intellect which everybody has where the normal knowledge from the material world is accumulated. So memories are created so on and so forth. And the pure intellect or which we call as the divine intellect which is not at all actually inside the body. It's not there inside the body. This divine intellect is the intellect which the universe and the whole creation has. But unfortunately, the average people are not able to tap into it. Because they believe they are some human beings who have no powers. They are miserable people they feel as if they are not able to achieve anything in life. Now, this kind of a feeling comes in when human beings have this weakness within them. So, there are two properties which we will be doing in the future. That is called the divine properties, divine propensities and the demonic propensity. There is an entire chapter based on that. We will do it in the future. So, just let us concentrate on the mind today and see what the next verse says. So, we are doing Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, verse 67. As the wind carries away a boat upon the waters, even so, of the senses moving among sense objects, the one to which the mind is attached, takes away his discrimination. So today, Sri Krishna has introduced a new word. It is called discrimination. Now please do not mix up this discrimination with what happens in the material world as discrimination. The discrimination between genders, the discrimination between colors, you know, religions and all that. No, not, that is not something we are discussing at. This discrimination is a word which describes knowledge on one side and ignorance on the other side. It is something which we have to understand. Discrimination is those who know the truth and those who are in the material domain who absolutely have no idea about this real genuine knowledge truth. So this word is very important to us because these are the words dispassion, detachment and discrimination are the three D's of spirituality. We will do them in detail someday. So here Sri Krishna is describing that as the wind carries away a boat upon the waters. In olden times there were no motor boats. <laughs> there were only sail boats. And they were rowing boats. So, all the sail boats and rowing boats, when you unfurl the sail, the wind carries the boat along. You have seen in all the pirate movies, isn't it? How the boat is taken along with the waters wherever they are supposed to go. So, in olden times, it's that boat which gets carried away by the waters, by the wind by the elements. So now let us look at what he is talking about the sense, the sense objects and the mind. Three things. The mind is attached to the senses. Alright? So the mind and the senses are pals. They are always together. 
So the moment you see some object, the mind is sitting along with him. Okay. <laughs> whatever object that you are, this sense is seeing or watching or hearing or whatever, the mind is sitting. It's in his house. The mind is something which visits all the houses. It is like a general dog's mind. You know, I want to go and visit this fellow. I want to go and visit that fellow. No invitation required. <laughs> mind is always there. So mind is like that kind of a person who always is sitting in somebody's house. So the mind which is there with this friend, it could be any sense. It could be maybe the vision. It could be hearing. So the mind immediately starts talking to the sense. Oh, this fellow is talking something bad about you. See, you better be careful. And mind starts giving all kinds of nonsensical answers. Immediately the mind jumps on it. So when you see somebody, let us say you see a beautiful person walking in front of you, immediately the eyes are going like this. Huh? <laughs> or if you see some nasty person approaching you, you know the kind. <laughs> Immediately your mind, your mind is telling you, why is he coming to me? Why is he coming to me? Immediately that eyes will look at that object and start saying these words. Or any problem in our life. Why am I going through this? It's, it's a very, very, it comes like this very fast. And this is where our problem starts. The mind creates those expectations and different, different kinds of uh, relations with all kinds of, you know, whether it is demonic or, or divine, both. So it gives an answer to the sense, see, this is happening. And so many permutation combinations. One, two, three, four, five, six, like it goes on. The mind's job is like that. It gets carried away like this boat. It's a sailboat. How it goes on the waters? Exactly like that. The mind is carried away by the senses. It looks at something and gets carried away. So the reason why it happens is because both are attached to each other. In one of the scriptures that I do, there is a story where mind is the one who is attached to senses as the children. They are the children. And this is the mother. And the mother is attached to the children. So they get carried away by what the mother says. Hmm? So, <laughs> so this is the verse. So now we will move to the next one. We are doing Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, verse 68. Therefore Arjuna, he whose senses are completely restrained from the objects, it is, is said to have a stable mind. The mind should not enter the picture. So, the senses have to be somewhere high there. The mind has to be sleeping. Away. Away from the senses. Non-judgmental is the word over here. Because the mind makes judgments constantly. So, the senses have to act independent of mind. The one connection which they have with the mind needs to be broken. Never allow the mind to enter the senses domain. Otherwise it's going to disrupt. So therefore Arjuna, he whose senses are completely restrained from their object is said to have a stable mind. If the mind is not there, then the eyes will see the object, whatever the object might be, 
it is not going to affect that individual. The object is an object that is outside. Whatever the object that is there outside. I said people, places and things. Anything that is there outside is not going to disturb. So when your senses like eyesight, vision, hearing, so anything that you speak, somebody speaks, is not affecting. Only the material worldly people get affected by the senses and the mind. So you will find that if someone in this material world is giving a dressing down to you, you know, person is reprimanding or giving you a dressing down, what happens? Immediately you start feeling very small. Immediately your mind starts reacting to it. Look at this way this person is talking to me. How can he talk to me like this? Blah, 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 blah. And then you become so small. Or otherwise you flare up. Otherwise you get very angry. How can you talk to me like this? Or sometimes you become a person who starts having self-pity. I am like this only. Everybody treats me like this. I am the worst person on earth. So what this person is doing is everybody does the same to me. What am I to do? I am a very miserable person. <laughs> this is the reaction of the mind. It is the ego which is there within the human beings. Ahankara we call it. This ego becomes very strong. It's either an inflated ego or a deflated ego. Both are egos only. And this ego becomes stronger and says, the inflated one says, how can you talk to me like this? You don't know me, who I am. The deflated ego says, yes, I am the worst person on earth. You treat me like dirt. I am a doormat. You got what I am saying? This is what the deflated ego says. And both are egos only. This is where Sri Krishna says when there is a disconnect of the mind with the senses, the object outside can do whatever it feels like. It should never affect the person. They can say whatever they want to. Why should it affect you? I will tell you, in the path of spiritual, this is a very common phenomenon. The answer is like this. When you are on the path of spiritual, especially those who are truly spiritual in the sense they have given up stuff and they are on the real sense of spiritual. They are treated like dirt in this world. Everybody says, you are a beggar. Remember, I have gone through this many years in my life. So when I gave up this material world, the first thing they said is, this person is a good for nothing person. He doesn't earn money. You see, he lives on handouts. I don't have money. I don't have even an account which I can say there is so much of pots of money lying anywhere. There is no personal identity anywhere. Everything has been erased. To decimate the ego, first you have to give up all these things. Please understand this. The name is very important. 
You see, till you do not give up your name, you are going to be feeling miserable to the court. The moment I gave up this name, the name which this body has, so when people ask me who you are, I said, God knows. Nobody knows. God knows. So Krishna knows. <laughs> so if they say anything to the old entity with Suresh, oh, they are talking to Suresh. They are not talking about me. Do you see how beautiful it is? They are speaking about some guy called Suresh. I am not Suresh. I don't even have a name. The ego of this name itself is so strong. You see, when you call somebody by the name and say, you are like this, it affects a person miserably, very badly. So why does a person have this ego of the name? Why does a person have the ego of the body? This body is also rented. This body is not mine. I don't, I use it only for the purpose like a Airbnb. Just imagine, a Airbnb. <laughs> so anybody saying anything to this body, they are talking about Airbnb. They are not talking about me. Again, it doesn't affect because you have given up the ownership of the body. Ownership about relationships. You see, somebody's husband, somebody's wife, somebody's children, that also is not there. Because the one which I am is not born. So I don't owe my birth to any person. So that person cannot claim me as a son or somebody like that. As a person, because it is not that person, so there is no question of family or anybody. So when there is no family, there are no children, there is no mother, there is no father, nobody calling out name to this body, then why should I be affected? I am telling you, this is freedom. Freedom that nobody can actually pinpoint towards this person and say that he is like this because I am neither he nor she. Not even they by the way, or them. So, there is no he, she, it, them, nothing. Because it doesn't have gender. It has no attributes. The funniest part is, nobody can call it anything. So then why should I take the onus of anybody saying anything to me? This is a very beautiful way where in the world of spiritual, when the guru changes the name of the person. They don't have an identity. They are just swamis and swaminis. That's it. I am not even a swami. If you saw me, then it's a different thing. Nobody can see me also. It's a play upon words. Okay. So, this the answer is, there is no need to stick to your name. There is no need to stick to a family. There is no need to have any relations with anyone. So he says, then you have a stable mind. Okay? So when you are with crowd, you are with the material worldly people. When you are with the material worldly people, you have to behave like that person. That person is who you are not actually. <laughs> so what are you doing? You are just enacting the role of that person. So this way, 
you are not attached to anything. Nothing. You are not attached to any person, place or thing. So if somebody says something to you, it should not really matter. So he says, Arjuna, he whose senses are completely restrained from their object is said to have a stable mind. When you have a stable mind, you have reached the state of yoga, oneness with the divine. That is the yoga which we have to aim for, not any other yoga. So we move to the next verse. We are doing chapter 2, verse 69 from the Bhagavad Gita. That which is night to all beings, in that state of divine knowledge and supreme bliss, the God-realized yogi keeps awake and that in which all beings keep away is night to the seer. Uh, this is a difficult verse, so listen very carefully what I am going to tell you. The average human being looks at the material world in the three states. The three states are waking state, sleep state and in between is the dream state. Three states. So the average human being is awake during the day. That is a normal human being is awake during the day. What does he do? He is interacting with the world. So he goes about doing his material worldly duties. Does he have any inkling of the divinity? Absolutely none. Because the moment you awake like this, your eyes are open, you become that person who has a name. Did you get it? The moment you open your eyes in the morning, you are going to call yourself that name. So if a phone call comes and the person says, Are you Mr. John? And if you are Mr. John, you will say, yes, hello, tell me, or whatever the re response is. So you believe you are that person. So during the daytime, you accept this identity which you have given yourself. You doesn't mean actually you, the whole world is calling you by that name. Your parents have named you, somebody has named you. And you have started accepting that as your, you are this, this person. I have a family. I have children. In your deep sleep, did you have children? No. Were you that person? No. Did you understand? In your deep sleep, you are not even that individual that you think you are. You didn't even have a body. You didn't even have a bank account, an ID card, a passport or anything like that which says your name is so and so. So the daytime for a normal being is I am XYZ. That's it. Now, the same is not true for the divine people. The sage, the yogi of the highest order, the moment he opens his eyes, he knows he is not that person. So taking my example, so when I awake like this in this body, do you think I call myself Suresh? No way. Everybody knows me as Krishna knows. That is who I become. I am that only. Do I own the body? No. The ownership goes away from me. I am not even the owner of this body. The body belongs to somebody else. I am just occupying it for some time. It is like the Airbnb example which I gave. Is it the same thing for you? No. Every human being thinks that their name is XYZ. 
every time when I open this Zoom chat, you see different different names keep on cropping up. Then I have to tell, please change my name over there. <laughs> the reason is because I don't correlate to any name. So when a person is away, an average person, they are asleep. Their knowledge is covered. But when a sage is awake in the daytime, for him, that is a time he knows he is not that person. It is such a beautiful knowledge. Never accept that responsibility of that name or the person. Why is it important? So that which is night to all beings, in that state, divine knowledge and supreme bliss, the God realized yogi keeps awake. Now this is very funny. <laughs> when everybody is sleeping, the whole world is sleeping, isn't it? The yogi is not sleeping at all. Means, sleeping to what? To tamas. Tamas. The sleep is a part of tamas. Human beings are asleep during the night. Because they are tired, because they need sleep. What does a divine being do? You see, his answer is very simple. The body is somebody else. That body needs some rest. Maybe he'll just lie down. So they develop this habit of not responding to themselves, the, the true them. They say, this body needs rest, so let them lie down. This understanding is very difficult to get in the normal person because the normal person believes the name that they have. They believe I am somebody's husband, I am somebody's wife, I am somebody's child, I am somebody's grandchild. Everything is relationship oriented. Relationship with everything, everybody and everything. This is my bed. This is my blanket. You understand what I am saying? This is my house. I am sleeping in my house. Who is this I who is sleeping in my house? <laughs> you don't even own the body. The body belongs to Prakriti. Prakriti is mother nature. She can take hold of the body whenever she feels like. Tomorrow she will say, Oh, your time is up. You have to get out of this place. Get out. <laughs> I want the body back. She will take it back. Finished. Your story is over. So tomorrow when you have no body, what do you do? So you have nothing to go back to. This understanding very few people have. So he says, the ever realized yogi keeps awake and that in which all beings are awake is night to the seer. When the world is thinking they are X, Y, Z, the yogi knows very well that it is not, he is not X, Y, Z. He is not a person. Everybody has to act like human beings. He acts like nobody. So for him there is a night. Did you get this understanding? It's a little tough. But try to realize that you are not the body. And then the answer will be very much staring you at the in your face. Otherwise it becomes difficult to understand what this is all about. All right. So I will stop over here because this verse is a little tedious and tough.